Assalamu alaikum, I am Dr. Junaid Jahangir Abbasi and I am Senior Registrar in Pediatrics at Rautwani Medical University. Today I am going to tell you about the different viva questions that can be asked in general physical examination. The examiner may ask you, what is the normal weight at birth? The answer is 3.5 kg. He may ask you, what is the normal weight at 1 year? It is 10 kg. At 2 years, it is 12 kg. And at 3 years, it is about, uh, at 3 and a half years, it is about 15 kg. The examiner may ask you, what is the normal length at birth? It is 50 cm. At 1 year, it is 75. At 2 years, it is 85. At 3 years, it is 95. And at 4 years, it is 100 cm. The examiner may ask you, what is the normal head circumference at birth? At birth, it is 35 cm. At 3 months, it is 41 cm. At 6 months, it is 44 cm. At 1 year, it is 47 cm. The examiner may ask you about certain questions in examination of the hands as part of general physical examination. He may ask you what are the causes of clubbing in the hands. You should answer like this. There are cardiovascular causes, there are GI causes, there are uh, respiratory causes and there are miscellaneous causes of clubbing. The respiratory causes of clubbing include lung abscess, bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis. The cardiovascular causes of clubbing include transposition of the great arteries, tetralogy of fallet. The GIT causes of clubbing include malabsorption, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease and primary biliary cirrhosis. The miscellaneous causes of clubbing include familial clubbing and pseudo clubbing. Now remember that the pseudo clubbing is seen in hyperparathyroidism and it is a state in which the terminal phalanx it gets uh, uh, the terminal phalanx become resorbed there is a resorption of the terminal phalanx and due to the resorption of the terminal phalanx a state of clubbing is created that is called pseudo clubbing Then the examiner may ask you about the different causes of lymphadenopathy. You should know that lymphadenopathy has infective causes and it has malignant causes. The infective causes include infections like tuberculosis, infectious mononuclosis or maybe local infections of the ear, nose and throat. And uh, the malignant causes um, include leukemia or lymphoma. The examiner may ask you about the causes of edema. You should divide them into pitting edema causes and non-pitting edema causes. Then among pitting edema causes, you should divide them like causes of pitting edema which are generalized and causes of pitting edema which are localized. The generalized causes of pitting edema includes different failures like heart failure, respiratory failure, uh, liver failure, hypoproteinemic states like nephrotic syndrome and malnutrition, malabsorption. The localized causes of pitting edema includes venous obstruction. If the patient is immobile or bedridden, it can have localized pitting edema. Or if there is local inflammation, local cellular test, it can also cause localized pitting edema. The non-pitting edema have causes like filariasis, lymphatic obstruction and surgical removal of the uh, corresponding lymph nodes in which the lymph gets accumulated along with mixed edema and angioedema. Then the examiner may ask you what are the signs of dehydration in children or how will you look for dehydration in children. So you should know that in order to see dehydration you need to see the eyes, the tongue, the skin pinch, the blood pressure, the pulse and the urine output. The eyes will be sunken, the urine output 
output will be low, the pulse will be rapid, the blood pressure will be low and the skin pinch will be slow in dehydration. Then the examiner may ask you what are the sites at which you, you will see the pallor. The answer would be nails, the palms, the lower conjunctiva and the dorsum of the tongue. Examiner may ask you what are the sites at which you will look for cyanosis. The answer will be at the nails, at the tip of the nose, the ear lobules, the inner side of the lip and the tongue. The examiner asks you, what is the difference between central cyanosis and peripheral cyanosis? The answer should be like this, that in the central cyanosis is caused by decreased oxygenation of the lungs. Whereas the peripheral cyanosis is caused by decreased blood flow to the peripheries or decreased venous return from the peripheries. He may ask you, what are the examples of, or what are the causes of peripheral cyanosis and what are the causes of central cyanosis? The causes of peripheral cyanosis include exposure to the cold, hypotension, Raynaud's phenomena and venous obstruction. Central cyanosis is seen in inner side of the lips and the tongue. Central cyanosis can be caused by respiratory failure or cyanotic congenital heart disease like transposition of the great arteries and tetralogy of phthalate. Then the examiner may ask you about the different signs of malnutrition. In eyes, we will look for bite out spots due to vitamin A deficiency and corneal clouding due to or corneal ulceration due to vitamin A deficiency. In skin, we will look for pretty key bruises as a sign of vitamin K deficiency. We will look for signs of rickets at wrists. The wrists get wide and frontal bossing and poor dentition and bowing of legs as part of vitamin D deficiency. We will look for easily pluckable and brittle hair as part of malnutrition. We need to know the difference between marasmus and kwashiko. The look of the child will be like an old man in marasmus and the child will be edematous and irritable in Kwashiko. So I hope that this video will help you in the exam. All the best. Thank you so much.